What's up guys, this is Foedin of FoTK and I'm back with another Maya tutorial. Now this is episode 7 and we're going to learn how to place textures on a model. So, if you've watched my previous tutorial, we went through how to create UV maps um, using the planar and the unitized tools, which can be found in UV and here. And here we go, I've already got this one textured, but what I am going to do... I don't know why I've put it into parts, and there's so much stuff actually. I'm just going to open all these up because I'm going to completely clear this texture, and I'm going to show you how to get from a UV into Photoshop uh, to place textures to then bring it back into here. Now obviously these are all the components, I haven't combined them yet. Um, okay, so if I just do that, uh, select them all. I won't worry about the planes because they're different texture. Uh, and create a new material. And go to just a Lambert. So there we go. If I pop the old wireframe on here. So as you can see, this is ge the geometry of my model. Um, um, it's 4,000 tries. Um, tries is triangles. Um, that what will be in games. So if you're looking at games design, that's very important to your models. Um, otherwise, it's just under 2,000 faces, which is all right for a house. Um, however, aim as low as possible. So most of the detail will be on the actual thing itself. So what you'd do is if you come into the UV editor. Shame I haven't got two screens, but We'll have to make do. There we go. So every time you click on an asset, it's got a very a varied UV which I've placed. So I'm going to need to come into here. If I do part one, because what I do is I keep all this geometry and then group them into parts. So then I know what ones part. You know what. Usually you would want to keep them all in one shell, but obviously that's not always possible. So I just need to find where part one ends. So there we go. So what if I if I select all these now, just turn on the UVs. There we go. I can see that my house. Oh, turn that wireframe off. My house is UV. So you can see all the squares are nice. Um, not necessarily all the same size. I've had a bit of a play around a bit loosely with it, um, but that's what I've got. So it's looking nice. If I place textures on, they will not be warped. Um, so that's all good. So if I just come back and select them all again, what you need to do is to export a UV shell. So you've got like this, you've positioned them all, you select them all. Um, and I want to export this to Photoshop. So making sure each component is selected, you know, you select it all and then you just click the checkbox on and off. Sometimes it doesn't always appear. And then all of them, you know, it'll only pick parts of them. I don't know why. But you just turn this off and on again and then it, they all appear. So this is what I've got to work with. So what I need to do, once I've got all these selected, I'll go to Polygons, UV Snapshot. And then we'll go File Names, so we'll just pop this onto Desktop, and I'll just call this Part 1 Shell. Name it whatever you want. Save that. And your size X and Y, these will stay the same, because each texture is in square, uh, square form. Um, it depends which size you want, though, but because I like my nice big textures when I'm making models, um, I go for 204A. And if you don't know about this, texture sizes, I can't remember them all off by heart. Just type in game texture sizes. Um, so I'll just go to the top one, it should be on there. Here we go. So you've got 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 10, uh, 2048, sorry. Um, now the thing is, it depends what kind of assets you're making. If it's a house, you're going to need a big one because obviously the walls are going to need a lot of detail and they're quite big. So you're going to need a wider one. But little things like plug sockets, picture frames, you can get away with doing 512 by 512. And the whole point of this is to save memory. So when you come to put this in game, they're going to run smoothly. It's not having to overrun on large textures for little objects. You know, that along with the poly count, they're all you know, going to help your game run smoother. So yeah, anyway, we come to our UV snapshot. So I'm going to keep it as 2048 by 2048. 
Um, make sure image tu- image format is a targa file or TGA because it's uncompressed and it holds alphas. Uh, so and it's obviously game standard. And then where I said in the last tutorial, where it's you know with coordinates, it says UV range normal naught to one, and that basically means from naught to one along the x-axis, and then on the y-axis naught to one. So everything in this box is going to be exported. So that once that's all good, that's fine. And then just keep aspect ratio, and then just click OK. Oh, no, it did do it. And then, if we look on the desktop, we have now got... It is here somewhere. TGA file. Well, I thought that was there. Refresh. Or am I being blind? I. Okay, maybe that didn't save. Right, let's try that one again. So we select all the components. Turn it off and on again. Polygons, UV snapshot, 204, yeah, 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 yeah. Desktop, what was it? It was part, oh no, maybe it didn't do it. Oh, wait, no problem, let's do it again. So, shell one, I'll just call it shell one. Save as, okay. There we go, we've got one now. So now we've got this shell, we can hit up Photoshop, and while that's loading, I'll just show you what I've made. So this is King's Cross Station in London. Um, if you don't know what King's Cross looks like, if I just whack up the old picture on the internet, that's basically what I've created with textures. And that's the overall look you kind of want to get. You know, and then another angle. You know, it's not, I could have done a lot more to it, but it's just a little brief project just to get some practice in. Um, so that's what we're going to hope to get with this. So, now we've got our snapshot. We need Photoshop open. We can go file open that and go down to shell one. And there we go. Now the first now I apologize if you can hear the dogs barking. Um they do that a lot. Anyway, first thing the way that I do it, I get this and then I will create a new layer. I'll make sure we've got a black in the palette, get fill, and just completely fill that over. And that's a grey, not black. There we go. And then I convert this background layer to a smart object and then drag that one on top. And then what I'll do is I'll turn the top layer to screen. And what that does is it removes the black on this UV shell. So when I put textures in, if I keep it between the layer 1 and layer 0, it'll be on top of the black but underneath the white edges. So I can see where my textures will overlap. And then what you want to do is you just want to come back into your Maya. And then say, for example, want to do the roof first. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to show you the principles of how you can do it. I want to know which polygons are which. So those two are obviously these two here. And then what you need to do is you need to go online, go to Google, and then find some roof textures. Uh, easy, just Google images and find one. But make sure when you do Google, you when you go to images, um, and I just put, I don't know, roof texture, make sure you go to search tools, size and large. Make sure when you get a picture, if you look here, you've got the aspect ratio of the or the pixel size of the image, make sure that's quite high because that will help you get sharper textures. So beware that one in mind. So I've already got one. So if I go place embedded and I think I've got it all in a folder, maybe with a house, I've got a roof texture. That one will do. And if I import that now, there we go. Now I can see there's a lot of you know, there's not that many tiles, so if I now put that for the whole thing, the tiles are going to come out quite big. Now, if you can get seamless textures, and what that basically means is, you can duplicate them left and right, and they won't, they they should all match match up. So if you go roof texture seamless, you can see stuff like this. You know, if you duplicate that, that will be in uniform. There won't be any weird mistakes and whatnot. Now, not all of them are like that, but this one I don't think is. But you can sort of grab them and then sort of do your best to match them up as best you can now I'm happy with I'm happy with that um, select both of those duplicate them again go to the top and then just come down again to uh, where I'm happy that would that would do and then you can do little tweaks if you wish so I'll select all those now I will merge them 
And then if I drag that in between, like I said earlier, you can see that the white is overlaying. So if I just bring that into position, size it down, and what I want to do is I just want to fill this box. But just, you know, just make it slightly bigger. And then once you've done that, just hide that quickly, grab the magic wand tool, I click on the top layer, which is this layer, and what I'll do is I will, no I won't do that actually, sorry, because it's going to cut out the white. Um, sometimes that works, which I'll show you later hopefully. I'll just grab this and I'll literally just cut out the ones that I need. So I just want to cut out everything apart from the bit I want. And I know what bit I want is because it's these two polygons here. So then once I've done that, and if I want to go and look to see what this is like in Maya, I'll just turn this layer off so I've got this roof texture. I'll go File, Save As, and I'll go to Targa, which is TGA as well, and I'll just call it Shell 1 Final. Uh, I'll save that. Make sure it's 24-bit, because 32-bit goes a bit messed up because I think it has an alpha on it or something like that. Um, so 24-bit pixel, that'll do. So click OK. You come back into Maya, and then what you want to do is you just want to click on the various mesh. So if I turn off the UV checkerboard now, click on the mesh that we've just applied a texture to, right-click, assign new material, go for a Lambert. Now that's the la that's the one you want to use, a Lambert, that's just a solid color. Um, but then you want to just over override that with a, a texture layer, so that's fine. Um, if you want some specular on, on say a window or something, you would go right click, assign new material, and you'll go blin. So that's basically a Lambert but holds specular. So you could just add a blin and then just turn the specular down just in case you want to use it, just in case you don't. So that's what I've done a few times. So then once you come to your color tool here, and if you've lost it, it's in the attribute editor, and then come across here to Lambert. Um, you want to come to color, but click the checkerboard to the little color options, which should appear. So I don't know why it's going slow. There we go. And you want to click file. And that will allow us to choose an image file. And you know what we're going to do now? We're going to import that shell one final in. And if you import it and nothing happens, it's because this little checkerboard item up here isn't checked. And that's basically turning the textures on and off. So there we go, now we've got some roof on our model. But if you turn around you think, oh, why is that black? It's because the other side hasn't been done yet. So I can just literally, very quickly, turn that on, duplicate the layer, edit, transform, flip vertical, and then move that down to something where I'm happy with, to something about there. Yeah, I like that. Turn it off, file, save as. I'm going to pick a bit of speed up here shell one final overwrite that now the good thing about this is when you've got an, a material like this assigned to a mesh you don't have to go file import again you click on here just click reload and now we've got one on the other side and then basically what you want to do is you want to go through each mesh go on to just making sure each polygon and each UV is filled with a texture and then you will be left with something like if I just reopen this house again you'll be left with something like this and there are ambient uh, sorry, ambient occlusion maps on this model um, which I will show you in the next tutorial and that gives it the little shadow edges here which makes it look much nicer um, but the same principles are gonna need to be applied so you've UV'd, uh, sorry, UV'd everything you should wanna select each object that is involved in this UV shell um, and obviously I keep different groups so that's one UV shell. So if you look on the right, that's one. Click on part two, that's the rest. So that was literally only the last few bits. But I put it on another one anyway. It's only a model for YouTube, so I didn't need to optimize it or anything. Um, so that was fine. So obviously I've kept part one, which is this building, on one. And then part two, which is this separate piece on another. Part three was basically part one duplicated, so that, that's fine. So I just literally texture part one and once all the te textures are on I just duplicate it over and it just takes the whole thing so that's a lot quicker you don't have to build the rest you know so bear that in mind when you're creating your models um, so yeah so make sure all of the individual meshes are in that specific group and make sure each mesh has a UV and they're not overlapping or flipped or anything like that um, <coughs> sorry <coughs> something stuck in my throat 
Um, so yeah, so just go through it very quickly again. So you've got the UVs, you want to select them all, go to polygons, UV snapshot, and then choose where you want it to save. Choose your image size, and if you're not sure what sizes to do, you can just Google game texture sizes. So it's 512, 1024, or 2048. Um, and then image format, targa. You want that as a targer, and then just keep the rest the same and aspect ratio and whatnot. Click OK, and then open it up in Photoshop. So you'll have something like this. Create a new layer, add a black background, convert this to a smart object, and then just basically place the background background underneath and add the transfer mode of this new shell onto screen, and that removes the black. So when you put a texture on underneath it. You can still see the shell. Um, add all your textures in, and, and when, when you're ready, remember to always hide this first before you save. I've done it many times where you leave this on. So when you put this onto your, you know, if you've got this still selected while you're importing your message on, it, you've got your textures, but you've also got a wireframe on top of it, and it just, you know, it's just a bit annoying because you think, why didn't I do that? But you know, you, it might happen, it might not. It just depends. Um, yeah, so then you come into uh, Maya, you right click on your mesh, you right click, assign new material, go to a Lambert or a Blin, depends on if you've got a specular or anything like that. Um, so you go to a Lambert, make sure to come to the checker box next to color, and go to file, and then you can choose your image map, which will be shell one final. So there we go, guys, that's basically how to you know the texturing process the next tutorials I'm going to run through how to make ambient occlusion maps and then I'll, again I'll make specular maps and then then I'll start doing more tutorials on um, making little models you know like full tutorials maybe in parts but to show you the full process from start to finish um, and hopefully that way it will get you a little bit started um, so yeah hope you like this tutorial guys sorry if it's gone on a bit too long but I hope I got the main uh, process across and hopefully you can learn from it so um, get a bit of practicing and I'll hopefully see you in the next video peace